Well, ladies and gentlemen, 2022 was absolute dog shit for top 40 music, and it was especially horrible if you're in the lower echelons of the working class. But today, let's talk about the bright side of 2022. These are the 10 best metal songs of 2022. Lads, metal music is what kept me sane this year. If it were not for metal music, I would have been dead by now, either by suicide or on the floor of the same Walmart I got fired from after shooting up the place. Consequently, there are plenty of honorable mentions at the end of this video, but first I want to present to you my list of what I thought were among the 10 best of 2022 in terms of metal music. Carefully considered, because unlike pop and hip hop, metal actually means something to me. Number 10 is Sleeves Off by Voided. <laughs> This year saw my exposure to a lot of new bands, as I listened to every studio album from bands like Anthrax, Accept, Agent Steel, and so many more. Not like you have anything better to do when you're unemployed and most of your time goes towards playing video games and being sad, but I did check out Voivod's 15th studio album, Synchro Anarchy. If you love thrash metal and progressive metal, you'll definitely get a kick out of Voivod. I say this despite only having listened to just this album, but I think this would have fit well in the 90s. Very old school sound. Very good flow. I can certainly relate to the lyrics of this song as well, but the song starting off with, as far as I can remember, always been not for hire, never meant for conformity, it doesn't seem to grow on me, sums up the year I had perfectly. If you've been with me throughout this year, you know that I've documented my downfall as I've struggled to look for a job, and while I did land one in time for the new year, it doesn't pay much, and on top of that, I'm only getting 10 hours a week on average. At least I was finally able to score a side hustle, and I worry that I have failed at life because I'm 22, jobless, and can't even find a fucking side hustle. I did work at a fast food joint for a short time, during which I was made to wear a strict dress code of a white polo t-shirt, black jeans, and skid-proof shoes. Conformity on that level just fucks with my mental health. You gotta worry about some boss telling you to go home and change into something better. I don't want it, I'd rather do this all on my own, I don't need this, I want to make it all on my own. The lyrics also inspire hope, with lines such as don't hesitate, don't lose faith, don't fear the wave, all to escape. Never stop fighting for a better world. A world that doesn't require you to take some dead-end job slaving away over a girl just to make rent. Sleeves Off is the fifth track from Synchro Anarchy. Synchro Anarchy was released under Century Media Records, and received a 93% approval rating on the Metal Archives. Number 9 is the hilariously named Dicke Titten by Ramstein. I apologize if I butchered that. Ah, Rammstein. The same people that made Du Host and Weidman's Hill. Those are two songs that I grew up playing on Guitar Hero. This year, they released their eighth studio album, Zeit, which translates to time. Dicke Titten starts off with this, what seems to be World War One era military music. The title of this song translates into Big Tits. I know I rag on hip-hop for being songs about just big tits and big ass, but Dicke Titten by Rammstein is about big tits. But unlike hip-hop, the artist here isn't looking for just some whore to bang, but romance. The song the song talks about how the person is getting older and they have no luck in being able to find someone. I'm turning 23 on the 19th and I haven't even had my first kiss. She doesn't have to be beautiful. She doesn't have to be smart, no. She doesn't have to be rich. Absolutely does not have to be rich. Not a model with long strides, but big tits. Hell, at the point I'm at, I don't even care about big tits, but that's just me. The song is very upbeat. I like how they used the synthesizer on this and made a more modern orchestral version of the intro and included that at the end of the song. Really nice piece. Dick Get Titten is the ninth track from Zeit. Zeit was released under Universal. Blech. And was rated 4 out of 5 stars by Metal Hammer, because I guess these guys aren't on the archives despite being industrial metal. Fun fact, the band only decided to produce this album as a result of their tour being cancelled due to the COVID-19 pandemic. So that's one good thing COVID did for us. Number 8 is Insurrection 3.0 by Astra. Yeah! I'm going to say right now that every time YouTube recommends some Fox News shit to me, not only do I react to some leftist content, but I also check out some commie metal. And unfortunately, YouTube has been ramping that shit up lately. But the left-wing political scene of metal is not to be underestimated. Astra is a band from Ecuador that espouses themes of Native American nationalism and anarcho-communism. Something I certainly support once the Imperial Age is over on the American continent is Native American independence. Although I certainly wouldn't mind retaining power and using it to fight other bourgeois dictatorships. 
partnerships. But anyway, Astra use orchestral instruments in their heavy slash folk metal hybrid style of music, and what they have on this particular single is pretty decent, pretty heavy stuff. If I didn't know any better, I'd say the Metal Archives mislabeled this and should have put symphonic power metal as their genre. The song is rather hard to find without buying it on Amazon, so I'll include a link to the music video in this card. The use of synthesizers and a power metal-esque beat is sure to get one's head bobbing. Maybe you'll even find yourself up and moving around and turning the volume to max. In 2021, Ecuador's left-wing party did lose out in the general election, so if you're into left-wing politics and want to help cultivate the revolution, I highly recommend giving these guys a shot, seeking out the single and supporting them, though they haven't released a studio album since 2015. Number 7 is The Wolf by Amorphous. Amorphous is one of the bands that I listened to much of this year. I braved their alt-rock era, which I did not hate, but I certainly wasn't up and moshing around to it. Their alt-rock influence is still present on albums such as 2022's Halo, their 15th studio album, but they certainly incorporate elements of Finnish folk and melodic death metal in just about every album of theirs from 2007 onwards. The song that stood out to me among the 11 in Halo was The Wolf, the 10th. I can certainly imagine this being an old Finnish folk song that was once played with accordions and harmonicas, and the sword. This song is one of many that earned Amorphous the title of the Finnish version of Amon Amarth in my book, with intense death metal vocals and aggressive playing reminiscent of the brutal Viking metal legends. The clean vocals during the chorus and the slow playing during the bridge give Amorphous their own unique twist, which commands my respect. I also love the use of choirs about three quarters of the way through the song. If you're into bands like Amon Amarth, I highly recommend Amorphous's eight most recent albums, though you will have to sit through a lot of boring stuff. But the gems are shiny and beautiful once you find them. The album this is featured on was released under Atomic Fire Records, a new record label run by the same guy that founded Nuclear Blast, and receives an 85% approval rating from reviewers on the Metal Archives. Number 6 is Marijin Minnar by Therion. One thing I was excited to hear about was the announcement that 2021's Leviathan was the first part of a trilogy of albums, with Leviathan 2 being released in 2022 and Leviathan 3 projected for release later this year. Leviathan 1 made spring 2021 worthwhile, and patiently I had waited and was quick to jump when this album finally dropped in October. The album was great, but inconveniently placed within the year, I would say, but I'll be sure to revisit the album in the spring. The main track that came out on top to me from Leviathan 2 was Marjan Minnar. Absolutely majestic start with the choirs that perfectly flow into the main part of the song and mix well with the female vocals. It was honestly tough to pick just one song from this album to join the list of the 10 best metal songs of 2022, but this melody has come back to me at various points throughout the cold season, and will be sure to have a fond place in my heart by the end of the warm season this year. The Leviathan series will surely be what immortalizes Therion in the world of metal, though they still have many great years ahead of them and behind them. We wait eager but patiently for what they will bring to the table with Leviathan 3. Marajin Minar serves as the sixth track from Leviathan 2, which serves as Therion's 18th studio album released under Nuclear Blast, and receiving an 80% approval rating from reviewers on the Metal Archives. Okay, I've covered 5 songs with 5 more to go. You're free to skip this part, as this is merely bonus material for the list. If you've kept up with my YouTube channel, you know that I run my own metal act known as Death Wish, which attempts to be symphonic thrash metal in style. In 2020, I released my first few singles, which would later feature on my first full-length album, Headbangers Against Trap Music. And in early 2022, I released a follow-up album, make metal great again. My wish is to present a viable, pioneering act for a style I feel that has gone underdeveloped within metal, seeing as how there is plenty of symphonic black metal, quite a bit of symphonic death metal, though not as popular as symphonic black, but there's absolutely no symphonic thrash, at least not any that I think does a particularly good job of fusing thrash metal with orchestral elements. Though there is Iced Earth's epic thrash metal, and pretty much anything that the Archives considers to be, quote, extreme symphonic metal. Nice stuff, by the way, I do take influence from Iced Earth. There is also Metallica's s and stuff, which, if that's what you prefer to listen to, go ahead, but give my stuff a shot at least. In addition to Iced Earth, I also take influence from bands such as Dimmu Borgir, Cradle of Filth, and Jahina. This month, on the 20th, I will be releasing the third full-length album of Death Wish, the first part of a two-part series surrounding a heavily based in fantasy alternate history scenario in which Kanye West wins the 2024 United States presidential election. President Kanye Part 1 Cloud Chaser. I already have the first three tracks as well as the fifth, sixth, and seventh tracks out as singles. Here I will share with you a sneak peek for the 8th track.
What you just heard was liberation through obliteration. Give me your honest opinion. Thrash or trash. If you liked it, I would appreciate it if you checked out the whole 42 minute album when I release it. Part 2 of the President Kanye series is projected for a January 2024 release, with which I will attempt to improve upon my efforts from Part 1. After Part 2, Deathwish will undergo a shift in theme to more serious subjects, so look forward to that. Continuing on with the list, number 5 is Supernova by Saxon. Aside from a certain song that I listened to during the summer, which featured the lead singer from Saxon, this would be my first exposure to Saxon as a complete unit. And I must say, my expectations were shattered. Admittedly, I did not have very high expectations for Saxon's newest album, Carpe Diem, their 25th studio release, Supernova being the 6th of 10 tracks. I was amazed to find that Saxon shared many similarities to the later works of Iced Earth, the song Supernova, in particular reminding me of Democide from Plagues of Babylon, though Supernova would have been better with Stu Block on vocals. Myself from 2017 would have absolutely loved this track and the album it is on. Another song this reminds me of is Days of Rage from Dystopia, which is another song by Ice Earth I enjoyed back in high school. Very nostalgic stuff here for me. This song beckons me to listen to the rest of Saxon's work. Carpe Diem was released under Silver Lining Music and receives a 71% approval rating from reviewers on the Metal Archives. Number 4 is Vultures Will Feast by Crypt. These guys are fucking amazing. I listened to their first EP early on in 2022 and was disappointed to find that I couldn't include some of the stuff on there on the list this year, but they hit us with their first studio album just in time for the finalization of this list. If you're into Slayer, I highly recommend listening to the Enter the Crypt EP as well as the Ripe With Sin album. These guys would have fit in well in the 80s. Maybe they would have even beat out Metallica and achieved Big Four status. The song that stands out the most from the album would be the 10th and final song, Vultures Will Feast. It truly feels feels like you're at a concert of theirs that is literally located in hell, and you're in the furnace being consumed by flames that reach a height that's at least twice as tall as you are. I think it is safe to say that Crypt will offer themselves as the successor to Slayer, after Slayer announced their retirement in 2019. This song and album is a shining example of what the band are capable of, and we eagerly await their next release. The metal community will be sure to watch the career of Crypt with great interest. I will be sure to take influence from Crypt as I continue on with my own projects as Deathwish. Ripe with Sin was released under Terminus Hate City Records and does not have any reviews on the Metal Archive, so be sure to give this album a shot and drop a review. Number 3 is O Sentido So Pode Ser by Car Carazul. I apologize if I mispronounced that. As you can probably gather from the art cover, these guys are another leftist-themed band that, that deals with topics such as war, class struggle, and anti-fascism. They hail from Brazil, a country which recently made the transition from hardline conservatism to social democracy. The song O Sentido So Pode Ser is the first of three tracks from their sole release of the same name as the song. They are labeled as a black metal band, but their use of accordions and Russian folk instruments makes them a model example of what I imagine red metal to be. Though red metal, like black metal, is more based on the lyrical content Content rather than musical content. With this song, I vividly imagine the Soviet struggle against the Nazi war machine, the resistance against Operation Barbarossa, the Great Patriotic War. The song and EP as a whole is sure to draw one in for anticipation for a full-length release, and hopefully we get that at some point in the future. Perhaps they will even release such material later this year and make the list of the 10 best metal songs of 2023. I will be sure to watch them with great interest. The EP cannot be found on YouTube, but a link to the Bandcamp page will be provided in the description of this video. O Sentido So Pode Ser was released independently, keep it that way, but has no reviews on the Metal Archives, so if you ever get in the mood for any Red Army style metal music, I highly recommend giving Kara Shul a chance and reviewing their EP. Number 2 is a two-way tie between Put Your Back Into The Ore and Get In The Ring by Amon Amarth. Put Your Back Into The Ore was released the day I got fired from Walmart. So that's one good thing that happened that day. Well, getting fired from Walmart was a good thing for me too, because it meant that I no longer had the fucking walk on eggshells. That's a different story I've already told on this channel. I just wish getting fired didn't foreshadow the final act of my life. But anyway, Put Your Back Into The Ore is a song that I've enjoyed working hard to. Whether I was listening to it, doing house chores, or working on a video, Amon Amarth is where I get my strength. Where The Last With Pagan Blood is a song to march to, and Wrath of the Norsemen is a song 
to throw yourself at an overwhelmed enemy force too, and Shield Wall being a song to defend the motherland with all your might too, put your back into the ore is a song to work hard on something that you enjoy doing. Put your back into the ore. Very good follow up to 2021's re-recording of Masters of War, which made number two last year, making this the second year in a row that Amonomarth almost made number one. Put your back into the ore would foreshadow the release of their 12th studio album titled The Great Heathen Army, the first among that album being the wonderfully executed Get in the Ring. The music video for which featuring former WWE wrestler Eric Rowan, now known as Eric Redbeard. So that's pretty fucking awesome. Lately I've been using my Christmas present to myself, and by that I mean that I've been playing the shit out of Skyrim. And I just imagine playing Skyrim in third person view to this exact song, whether I'm fighting a dragon or collecting resources, the song fits the game well in my opinion. The song was also good for this clip. <laughs> Someone help, I think I worship cats like gods. Extremely decent effort by the Viking death metal legends this year. Fun fact, I almost made Skoggle Rides With Me the song to represent the new album, but I changed it right in the middle of writing this because I felt that I favored Get In The Ring more. That said, you should check out Skoggle Rides With Me. Matter of fact, just listen to every Amon Amar song. They're fucking absolutely outstanding. Put Your Back Into The Ore was released under Victorious Music Records, but has no reviews on the metal archives, so give this song a go and write a review for it. The Great Heathen Army, meanwhile, was released under Metal Blade Records and receives a 67% approval rating from reviewers on the archives. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, number one and the best metal song of the year is Requiem by Abomnium. Early on in spring, I listened to Abomnium for the first time. I put their band on my set list for this year because I wanted an idea as to what Blackened Death Rash, or Brutal Blackened Thrash Metal if you prefer, would sound like. Because I do want to adopt a Blackened Death Metal influenced sound for Death Wish briefly in the future, but to combine that with my own style of symphonic thrash metal would require listening to a fairly underrated, if not rare, style of metal music. This year offered us Abomnium's fifth studio album of Time and Dying Stars. I would listen to the rest of Abomnium's work early in the autumn. They sound quite a bit like Bathory, but they're not quite as good, I'm afraid, but the only reason I listened to the rest of their work is because their fifth studio album was rather impressive. In particular, Requiem, I imagine four powerful nations coming together to fight an absolute juggernaut, the front line holding still as the titans clash. This is a song that I still get up and go wild for when it plays, complete and utter death and destruction in my fantasy world as I windmill, with the song leaving me thirsty as it ends fucking amazing. I don't know why these guys don't have more recognition. With their unique style fusing thrash, death, and black metal, I would have hoped that this would prove to be their breakthrough album, but I will certainly hold them as high priority when they set up to release their sixth album. Requiem is the fifth track from Of Time and Dying Stars, which was released under UKEM Records. Of Time and Dying Stars has no reviews on the metal archives, so I highly recommend this album to anyone that listens to any kind of metal, be it speed metal, power metal, folk metal, prog metal, doom metal, Standard heavy metal, glam metal, new metal, metalcore, hardcore punk, Abomnium is worthy. Listen to their newest album and drop a review on the metal archives for me. With that, ladies and gentlemen, I conclude the list of the 10 best metal songs of 2022. Honorable mentions go to, and the list is rather long, so bear with me. <clears throat> Blood of the Elves by Blind Guardian, 1109 by Reptil, more Kami Metal from Chile, Of My Herculean Exile by Behemoth, Requiem de la Hien by Sotheris, they're from Poland so forgive me if I butchered that, real great though, they sound just like Behemoth, Cold Burn by Cult of Luna, cool R cover, looks like it would be an R cover for one of the stages from Everywhere at the End of Time, and the song and much of the material from The Long Road North, sounds like it would be stage 6 but as a metal album, Blight by Allegion, Transte Hanya King by Necro Chaparro, another Kami Metal song, Song. These guys are from Portugal, though they are more black metal than they are red metal. The Tower of the Moon by Goods for Lat, yet another Kami Metal song. Monsters Lament by Ashes of Ares, No Mercy by Hammerfall, Evil Incarnate by Lord Belial. I was fucking stoked when I heard these guys were returning. A Beast to Praise by Dark Funeral. It was Christmas Day 2021 when I heard Dark Funeral were releasing an album for 2022. I almost cried tears of joy. Dirty Water, Dirty Blood by Kill the Crown, Kami Metal from the good old US of A. Virtue and Chaos by Harkonnen. Where we go. 
Go Over Again by Insecurity, Guerra Infinita by Lerna, Kami Metal also from Brazil, Segunda Guerra de Liberacion by Spinal, Kami Metal also from Chile, and Reincarnation by Entra Lemusia, my first exposure to symphonic deathcore. Probably would have made the list, but I listened to the album this is on during the writing process. And that will conclude this video. I hope you enjoyed my list of the 10 best metal songs of the year. If you did, be sure to click thumbs up, share the video far and wide, and leave your thoughts on my picks in the comments below. If you'd like to share your picks on what you thought were the best of 2022, please do comment them. Perhaps you listened to something that I missed out on that would have made the list. Please do subscribe for more content like this. I have another best of list coming in the spring as well as a band list, so if you'd like to catch those as soon as they come out, please be sure to click the bell so that way you'll get notified. But ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for watching this video, and I will be back this weekend to bash a pop song from 10 years ago. Or not, because I need to refill my stockpile of videos. Whatever, I'll see you when I see you. Bye guys.